Coming out of Psalm 105, 1 through 11. And it's just amazing how God has been working today. Amen. You know, sometimes it takes you a while to uh, find out who you are worshiping. But after running for 45 odd years or more, I finally came to the conclusion that the one I need to be worshiping is the one I've been running from for a long time. Right. And now it's time to give him the glory, the honor, and the praise. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I, I am ready. Dwell in me, Lord, and let me speak your word. Guide me, Lord, for it is you that I serve. No more running. Hallelujah. I'm free. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, yeah. all things in Christ Jesus. Thank the Lord. We're free. Amen. Now, Psalms 105, 1 through 11, even though it's been read earlier, I'd like to just read a couple of verses. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing to him songs, sing to him, sing psalms to him. Talk of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Gratitude for his mercy. How do we deal with mercy of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? For those who don't believe or haven't accepted Christ, it is a demand. Yeah. A demand that you quit doing what you're doing and come to Jesus. Come to God. The greatness of his favor. In order to gain favor of the Lord, of God, you have to accept him in your life. The distinguishingness of his motivation. Yeah. You say, 
God is motivated yes. constantly and always. He's always looking for us. Yes. Not us looking for him, but he's looking for us. He's looking for us to help celebrate his wondrous works. Again, it is a demand. Yes. Can you celebrate all that God has done for you? Can you show him goodness and mercy that he's shown to you? All that he's done for you. Publicly and rapturously. You say, what do you mean rapturously? Publicly, you know, when you walk out the door, God is showing you favor. Mm -hmm. He's allowing you to walk out the door. And rapturously, God showed you even more favor. Because while on the cross, he died for our sins. Christ is our redeemer. Christ has came back. Christ was took up in the raptures. Christ will return in the rapture. A loud shouting thunderous voice, a trumpet that sounds so loud it will raise the dead. Delight in him. It is a demand. If a noble son rejoice in his father, because of the noble of his character, the greatness of his influence, the superiority of his attainments, natural and acquired, the greatness of his resources. Yes. How much more should a true man delight in the infinite father, the founder of all goodness. Delight in him. Whatever we need, whatever we so desire, what we need, which we don't often do, is give it to God, is allow him to source our every need. What we do, we try to source ourselves. We need a car payment, we can't find it. Sometimes we go do something we have no business doing, such as some go play the slot machine. Take the little bit that they have that they could put on it to try and increase to make it where they have all to put on it. Sourcing ourselves. Some go out and harm little people by selling that thing we call cocaine, Marijuana, opiums, those drugs that are so illegal. Again, trying to source ourselves. What we should do is just get down on our knees and pray. Ask the Lord for the answer. Believe me, no matter what it is, he will 
deliver. So, delight in him. Pursuit of him. Again, earlier I said God is in pursuit of me. I'm not in pursuit of him. He knows my every strength, my every weakness. He knows when I can find him and when I can't. But he knows every inch of me and where to find me when I need him the most. Not find me when he need me because he know where I am. Find me when I need him. For these things we are made to serve him. This alone is our happiness, serving our Savior, allowing him to dwell in us. And last, but not the least of all things, the remembrance of him. This is a demand. There are two subjects for memory. One, God's wonderful works of man. I say, look at yourself when you get home. Look in the mirror and see how wonderfully you are made. And remember who it was that made you. Remember who it was that made your better half. Who it was that made your little ones, your son and your daughter. Remember who it was that made the most loving person in your life. For most of us, that would be our mother. Yeah. The one we love so much on Mother's Day. For some, it would be their father. Not their spiritual father, but their natural father. Think of the one who actually made him. Made him in the splendid image of himself. The one who should be so worldly remembered. And that is God. God's wonderful utterance to man. God has spoken to humanity many things, many times in many lands. Wonderfully thought, these words should be remembrance by all men, by all people by all humans, by all things. The one creator of it all, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God has a wonderful revealed, God has wonderfully revealed himself in history by his marvelous works of love to the Jews and to the world. Christianity, a great historical embodiment and 
exhibition of the love of God. Whom do you love the most? Me, myself, I love my wife. I love my son. I love my daughter. And sometimes I know she look at me and she say, do you really love me? In her mind, she says that. In her heart, she says, I know you love me, but sometimes you don't act like it. But I, I love you. I really do. But I love God more than you. I love the Father because he created me. Sometimes they say, are you perfect? When we say no one is perfect except for Jesus, God's son, the actual spoken word of God, our son or his son, Jesus Christ. All of that being said, I just want you to know who governs and rule my life. Yeah. Number one is Jesus Christ. Yeah. I know y'all say number two is me, myself, but number two is my wife, Gwen Delaney. Number three, you would say me, myself, but no, number three is my daughter, Honor Delicia Leonetta Bird. She is the third ruler in, in my life. You say, well, where do you fit in? I haven't got to me yet. Because then there's my son, Marcurius, who also tried to rule my life. Then... There is the one thing that I am trying so desperately to get away from because it is what rocks my flow. As my wife and my daughter would say, put your phone down. Don't take your phone with you. You act like your phone is your God. You can't do without it. But I can do without my phone. Don't kill me when I say this. I can do without my wife. I can do without my daughter and my son. But I cannot do without our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All of that being said, I'm going to open the doors of the Crucible Ecumenical Church of Christ to those who would like to join at this time. You can come forth. Those of you out there in TV land, just stand where you are. Call me. You see the number on the board. 